Welcome, friends. Uh, today we are here at another episode of uh, Gender Equality Talks Live, G Talks Live, and uh, we have amongst us Aplista the Costa. We just saw some of the media coverage. Uh, she is uh, an inspiring young person and uh, also a psychologist who has been dedicatedly working with the Human Touch Foundation. Those who have been involved with HIV TV responses in Goa, India, or are aware of, they will know the kind of very important work Human Touch Foundation has been doing over the years. And Aplista is here in Thailand at the Asia Pacific Youth Festival on uh, putting young keep your populations first to end AIDS by 2030. This is, I should not be the one who is talking. We are here. Apalista is right here. But before we listen to Apalista, let us remind friends that CNS has launched uh, the Gender Equality Talks Live uh, in recognition of uh, the core belief, the deepening belief that bodily autonomy and sexual rights are so integral if we are to uh, you know deliver on the promises of sustainable development or development justice for all worldwide so uh, uh th this is part of that and uh, welcome apple apple star thank you thank you so much for having me today thank you real pleasure and real honor that you are here representing our country um at the asia pacific youth festival putting young key populations uh, you know first to end AIDS by 2030. Very, very important indeed. Uh, so Apalista, please let us know, uh, like how is the Young Youth Forum going on? What are the key highlights? What will you like to share with us? Over to you. Uh, so we had this uh, youth forum for one and a half day uh, in Bangkok, and it was a really great experience, very enriching. We uh, we were able to you know discuss the issues that surround HIV and what is lacking uh, in the HIV response to end uh, uh, AIDS 20, by 2030. And we had uh, participants from almost uh, 14 countries from the Asia and Pacific region. And uh, from the conversations that we had, from the interactions that, and, and the discussions that we had, you know, we really saw how uh, most of the issues and the challenges faced in the different regions are so similar. And, you know, how do we actually uh, work about and collaborate with the different uh, agencies which are there across uh, the globe, you know, to really uh, get together and end uh, HIV uh, AIDS epidemic by 2030. And uh, we were just actually going through the uh, report on um, the HIV and we saw how uh, even till 2020, it was, um, you know, 26% of the new infections were among the young population. So keeping this, it's a, it's a huge statistics and we really need to work towards ending this. Like, you know, like we are doing so much um, uh, in the, AID, uh, the HIV response, but we really need to find out what is the, uh, what are we lacking? Why are we still falling behind? Why is the uh, new infections going up? It's especially among the young people. Um, so there were a lot of uh, discussions that happened and a lot of things that we covered. And I think uh, there were four barriers that we have identified through this report, you know, which are actually causing uh, the rise in the uh, HIV infections. Uh, first, I would say is the uh, legal and policy aspect of uh, the, uh, the way we work, you know. And um, like, if you actually go to see the age of consent, like, you know, in different, again, in different regions, it differs, but uh, it is, um, I think, 18 years, you know, in India, for if you want to go and test yourself. So a lot of people do not want to go and test us themselves because if they are under the age of 18, you know, they require a guardian to come along with them. And no one really wants to take someone else along, you know, to get themselves tested because they will be judged. And there's a lot of uh, prejudice that goes around when it comes to being sexually active as well but yes we are aware that uh, you know adolescents as young as 13 14 years are sexually active and if they feel that okay they have maybe come across someone who is hiv positive and they are at uh, a risk of uh, acquiring hiv and they want to get themselves tested but they are not able to you know and uh, as as we see early diagnosis is crucial if we want to um, you know um, not progress to AIDS. Yeah, so that is one of the uh, aspects that we saw. 
uh, also uh, laws uh, that are very punitive in nature like we do have um, young people who are into uh, injecting drug so people who are injecting drugs they do want to access services and uh, they do want to uh, seek help but uh, why do they not come ahead you know this is because they fear that okay if they do come into the lime, limelight and you know they are known to be injecting drugs they would be arrested by by the cops and you know they'll have uh, repercussions for uh, actually being an injecting drug user so these are some of the things you know just examples of you know how law and policies actually hamper the young people's access to uh, the hiv services that are actually available the second thing is privacy and confidentiality um again everywhere we go for um uh, accessing any kind of services they actually require us to register ourselves show our identity cards and uh, no one would actually want to you know tell someone else okay i am hiv positive and that actually goes into record when you register yourself and uh, because of that those one of the reason that is one of the reasons that you know people living with hiv or young people living with hiv do not really want to access um because they do not want to disclose their status right uh, the third thing was the opening hours of services yes we there are a lot of ngos there are a lot of clinics that give hiv services but are they in line with you know the time that the young people are actually available so the the time that we normally open or ngos or any other sector giving services would open would be like from 10 to 5:30 but we should also keep in mind that you know this is the time when the young people are actually um, involved in other work they might be working they might be going to schools they might be going to colleges and they're not able to access you know these services so we need to keep in mind that we need to uh, align with what the young people actually need so you know working uh, like having different times or having drop in centers at a at a time that is more suitable for the target population so that is one thing that we need to keep in mind and um, the last thing is stigma and discrimination uh, till date hiv is associated with morality it is uh, prejudiced and there's a lot of stigma and discrimination that comes into place and uh, this can be in a school setting in uh, the household the family setting as well and we see that it is also majorly uh, still there in the um in the health setting as well so you know if the health setting is not a youth friendly setting uh if i go to a, a service to access a service and if uh, i get comments or i get responses from the health professional that is very negative in nature i would not be comfortable to you know go back and access services to the, from the same person so like you know so um these kind of attitudes that still surround hiv is something that needs to be tackled on so yeah these are the, the four issues that we spoke about and how do we actually um you know work around uh, like uh, to make it better for the young key populations especially yeah thank you so much apple star also a, a great great overview by the way I was so impressed you know with your brilliance in capturing these issues and articulating it so powerfully and we totally echo apple star too totally like you know like it is so important for, you know to to you know we talk about 1990 90 or or let us say 100 100 100 100 like 100% of people should know their status 100% of people should be virally suppressed yeah. or be on an art and virally suppressed and of course 100% prevention access to prevention services so that we have zero new infections in today's yeah. in today's times we have the tools right apple star we yeah. have the tools we know how to prevent we have range of tools proven tools uh, to known to science to you know we know that uh, they can we can reduce the risk of prevent hiv infection and uh, and of course like it's people for people living with hiv we have the tools to uh, ensure that they live full lives and undetectable becomes untransmittable but there's so much more which we need, needs to be done if we are to progress towards end it's totally echo all what you have said about this, uh, so let let me take you back to goa and quickly if you can let us know um like uh, how, uh, how or in goa or in your work context like uh, how the 
uh, how's the work going on with the uh, how, what progress are we making on young p young key populations in goan context or the or the context which you are familiar with uh, in terms of prevention in terms of testing in terms of uh, treatment but also in terms of stigma as a psychologist i will request you to please uh, dive deeper into and let us know like if um, self stigma or shame uh, continues to be a challenge or um, and what are the coping mechanisms for that that would be very insightful over to you Apple yeah uh, so answering your question uh, yes um, stigma and discrimination still surrounds HIV and uh, the fact that you know um, someone is living with HIV they are they have something called a self-stigma where they feel that you know if they uh, disclose their status um, they will be rejected and no one really wants to be rejected in the uh, in the society. You know, ev everyone wants to be accepted. That is one of those uh, needs that each person has. And um, looking back, you know, disclosure of status is something that no one wants to do because of the fear that they will be rejected. Um, so yes, uh, when disclosure of status is not done, people living with HIV or young people for that matter, they go through a lot of mental health issues, which is associated with HIV and without HIV as well. But again, they do not you know, want to speak about it because if they speak about it, again, they are disclosing their HIV status, which they do not want to do. So what happens is they keep it to themselves. So self-stigma is, is very prevalent, especially among the young people. And uh, that's why that's one of the reasons uh, they do not want to disclose their status. And um, again, they, there are uh, services that are there okay, uh, in the government setting, in the NGO setting. But again, they do not want to access this for the fact that they, they might end up meeting someone who they are known to. And uh, so that's a very sad part, actually, because also, again, confidentiality and privacy is not man maintained, even, uh, even though it is an ethical uh, you know, responsibility, some medical health professionals or allied health professionals do not really uh, you know, cater to this part uh, of uh, ethics. Um, so yeah, uh, prevention is very important, uh, especially among young people. And uh, what we see is that, you know, our prevention in terms of HIV is mostly uh, to the targeted population or the key population, as we say. And uh, again, prevention tools that are mostly used now is uh, condom promotion. Yeah. But uh, there are newer tools uh, in the HIV prevention that is like the use of PrEP and PEP pre-exposure prophylaxis and post-exposure prophylaxis, which is not really spoken to among the young uh, key population. And uh, that is a very sad part because I think uh, uh, more, uh, even although condom use can help HIV prevention uh, in a long way, uh, the, uh, the use of PrEP and PEP can also have, you know, ha be helpful. Uh, but what happens, especially in India, is that PrEP and PEP is only known uh, among the medical professionals and not the general population, um, which actually needs to be spoken about. And one of the reasons that we're not able to prevent uh, HIV is because of the lack of awareness, lack of knowledge that the young people have. You know, going back to the education system, if we see nowadays, it, it still does not involve comprehensive sexuality education. And uh, even when we were discussing in the youth forum, this is something that really needs to be adopted in the, in the educational curriculum. Because if the young people have the appropriate knowledge uh, uh, regarding sexuality and you know, um, reproductive health, they will be able to take more informed decisions, which will help them in, in you know, not putting themselves in a vulnerable position. And uh, I think um, education, not only to uh, the young people, but uh, educating even uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, teachers in the school setting, parents also, because even when we have like a class on biology, it's, it's not the appropriate knowledge or the accurate knowledge that is given to the young person. You know? And it's mostly done on a superficial level, which does not go a long way. So when uh, the right mentors do not give the right knowledge to the young people, the young people go 
to something called the internet, where again, they get misinformation. You know, so lack of knowledge is another uh, another thing that we really need to uh, really need to focus on and, and um, keep, uh, we need to involve the education system, uh, at least in this way, in the HIV response. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, so you have already, uh, you know, shared with us, uh, um, you know, what more can be done. Uh, will you like to add anything else, which uh, anything more should be done in uh, Indian or your context uh, to prevent HIV transmission among young people? And of course, so that they are diagnosed as early as possible, have access to PEP and PrEP both, um, you know, or to stay virally suppressed. Anything, any, any more insights on that? Um, Self-testing is another thing that I would like to focus right. on. Um, Self-testing in India is not uh, promoted and it's still not come, especially for the general population. Uh, yes, they have just done a pilot study where they have, uh, uh, you know, um, introduced uh, self-testing to the, uh, the key populations, but among the general population, again, it's not come. Uh, so I think uh, self-testing is one uh, medium that, again, we can involve for uh, prevention and uh, treatment of HIV. Because like I said, no one really wants to go and do an HIV testing in, in a place where they would come across, you know, in, in uh, among different people. So self-testing is something that really needs to uh, be engaged in. And also if self-testing uh, kits can be provided for free and, and you know, it's not really where... Uh, young people go and have to buy it for themselves. So yeah, that is another thing that I would like to focus on. And um, not really in terms of prevention, but uh, we till date, we see that mental health is not given a priority, uh, especially by the government uh, agencies. Yes, there are different NGOs and, and different uh, you know, mental health professionals working on their own. But uh, government still doesn't, you know, see uh, how mental health plays a very important role. Um, and uh, that is something that needs to be spoken about. Uh, today, mental health is very important. And uh, creating safe spaces is very important for our young people, especially. Because, uh, um, yes, they do uh, go through a lot of mental health issues, but they do not know where to seek the support that they need to seek. And um, also it hampers their, you know, overall well-being. And uh, we, uh, again, we speak about, uh, you know, overall well-being only in terms of physical health and mental health. Again, spiritual well-being is something that is not taken into consideration. And uh, yeah, I think spirituality as well widely needs to be taken into consideration, especially when it comes to uh, young people living with HIV, because you know, when they are first diagnosed with HIV, there is uh, the sense of helplessness and, you know, hopelessness and the fact that they, they kind of lose the meaning in life. And uh, that, is, that is where spirituality will play, a, you know, a very big role. Um, yeah. So I think uh, when we are considering the overall well-being or the quality of life of a person, uh, besides physical health and mental health, spiritual health is also something that needs to be taken into consideration. Yes, absolutely. Totally echo. And especially in the land of the smiles, Buddha, uh, Thailand, uh, and of course, globally also, I am sure uh, this is very well recognized. The spiritual and mental health aspect is so important and so very neglected. So thanks a lot for highlighting that. And also, uh, I'll, you know, I'll totally uh, echo what you had earlier said too. So, the, uh, so, so very important. Um, so, um, so uh, before we end, can, can we? Can you please share us like um, what 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 uh, drove you here? What what uh, uh, where did you get this light to to you know to devotedly work on uh, psychological aspects and with Human Touch Foundation and the kind of work which you have been doing uh, is really very inspiring. It's so so very important with the uh, especially um, uh, if we look at the HIV epidemic and key populations. Over to you, Apples. Yeah, uh, so uh, having studied psychology, I was really interested to work with uh, children and young people. And that's when I came and connect with Human Touch Foundation. And uh, uh, 
and knowing that they were working with young people, I was really interested. And um, yes, I took the opportunity because, um, you know, I was able to provide the safe spaces that uh, the young people actually look out for among this population. And they are the most vulnerable, the most, uh, you know, they require more help uh, in terms of uh, mental health services. So that's where I started my journey. And um, yeah, I think uh, I have been working with Human Touch Foundation and with young people living with HIV for over three years now. And uh, it gives me the sense of satisfaction that I can be a young advocate on behalf of them because they, again, do not want to disclose their status and bring out their needs and challenges on a platform. Uh, so, yeah, it really gives me uh, 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 the satisfaction that I can do that on their behalf and really put forth their needs, what are the challenges that they actually face and what are the solutions that they are looking out for, you know, uh, to help them to live a better life while living with HIV. So, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, let us hope that uh, your voice is more heard and the governments and um, other policymakers take note of all the issues which we have raised, which are so, so very important. Um, uh, and also I would like to echo uh, your uh, statements on uh, HIV self-testing. I think it is very, it's it's high time, you know, it's, it's, it's quite late already to roll out HIV self-test and make it accessible to all the people whosoever wants to have it. And we need to leverage that. And there are studies and evidence also Apple stuff done in India also. Um, and we wrote uh, uh, we on those studies for AIDS map, and you will also find it on CNS. I will sh share you with the, the link. But what I'm, what my point here is that there is scientific evidence of studies done in India how HIV HIV self testing helped uh, people um, get diagnosed early, but also to connect to the serve services in person to you know in their own locality with help. Uh, so there were different approaches which were used. So, uh, yeah. but anyways, totally echo what you said. You were saying something. Yeah, please go ahead. No, no, I was just agreeing to actually what you're saying. Yeah. Right. Any any closing thoughts before we leave you to do what you need to do before you head back? Yeah. yeah so um, I would just like to say that, you know, today's population comprises of majority of the young people. The young people are the future and the young people have to be meaningfully engaged in whatever interventions that we develop. And they are the ones who need to implement, you know, the the interventions that we actually want to uh, engage in while uh, you know fighting the HIV AIDS epidemic. So yeah, youth uh, need to be given a platform for uh, putting out their challenges, what are their needs, and you know how they can actually engage with all the stakeholders which are there. Um, yes, uh, we have you know stakeholders who have the experiences, the resources, but the young people can actually ev even you know. Um, like give their input so we need to close the cross-generation gap which is there uh, among young people and the stakeholders which are involved and um, funding is something uh, that all these um, organizations youth-led and youth-focused organizations are looking out for yes we do have interventions yes we do have services that we want to reach out to you know the young people the young key population but uh I think every organization who is actually working on the grassroots level is really, um, you know, uh, they are struggling because of finances. And uh, we are not able to sustain the interventions that we engage in, which are actually, you know, giving a good output. Uh, so I think uh, that is where, you know, donors and, and the other stakeholders can actually collaborate. Uh, with the uh, NGOs and, you know, uh, the other civil society organizations to take our services forward and reach out to a wider uh, wider network and a wider population. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, thanks again, a very, very inspiring uh, Apple Star. So I'll not uh, hold you any further. So friends, we were listening to Apple Star, the Costa from Human Touch Foundation, a very inspiring young person and, uh, uh, and a psychologist who is uh, devotedly working with key populations, HIV key populations in, in Goa, in India. Um, so, and she is here at the Asia Pacific Youth uh, Forum on uh, uh, putting young key populations first to end AIDS by 2030. So uh, all the links 
to the studies we refer to, to Human Touch Foundation in the social media accounts and stuff, you will find it in the description. Those of you who are listening on podcast, please click on the description or visit CNS. So thanks a lot, Apple Star again, and all the power to you. And let us hope that not only, uh, you know, uh, governments listen to you, but also uh, it's not only about closing the generation intergeneration uh, the gap, but also it is about building intergenerational alliances. People need for different age groups, especially the older ones need to get out of the way when it comes to, you know, responding to the, uh, to the young people. They know they are wiser, they know the issue, uh, they are the best people to find solutions that work for them. So, uh, so with with this hope that uh, in our lifetimes we will be able to see zero new infections, and uh, first in the young people, and of course in every age group, and all the people should get um, access to all the broad spectrum of HIV services, whether it is prevention or it is diagnosis, it's treatment, viral load. Everyone, each human being has a right to live a normal human, healthy, fulfilling life. And as Applesta had rightly said, also that, you know, self-stigma and shame and stigma and all its uh, different diversity needs to be uh, stamp, uh, stamped out. Any Anything you wanted to say, Applesta, before we end? No, just all thank right. you so much for having me. It was a really great honor. Very mutual. Thank you. All the best and all the best wishes to you and Peter Borges and Human Touch Foundation family. All the best. Safe travels. Bye-bye. Thank you so Kapan much. Krab. Swadi Krab.